Hey guys, it's Wesley with 22 Zines. I just got out of bed, like, geez, actually, I guess it's been like an hour and a half, which is a little bit embarrassing, because I've just been, like, goofing around online in bed. Um, but when I got up and actually, like, went to the bathroom and saw myself in the mirror, my hair was doing this, like, deliciously 80s new wave Zach Braff kind of thing. <laughs> So honestly, I just like wanted to come up with something to record real quick. I'm just still in my fucking pajamas and I just wanted to, yeah, like I needed to capture this on film. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is film this video that I've been meaning to film for a few days now. If you recall, it is mini zine March. And after my last video on mini zines, I had someone send me their mini zine over email. And I'm like, I'm so jazzed that people are doing that. I can't believe it. It really, like, when people send me a zine, I, I feel like a fucking celebrity. I feel like I've made it big and I'm now big in the in the zine world, in the zine community, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, people are sending me their zine. People are like, <laughs> you want, want me to, want to share it with me and want me to share it? It's like, yeah, I'm building a group here. <laughs> I don't know, I just really like it. Um, but I would have shared this anyway, because this is like, this is such a good idea. I don't know how you people keep coming up with these incredible ideas for mini zines in particular. I feel like, you know, because I had the last zine that someone sent me that was like planning their their future zine series, and now there's this one, and they're just like, these, these are like the greatest uses for mini zines that I've ever seen. And this one is the anti zine, or why no one should get involved with zines, issue 001. And this was sent to me by Ren, who I guess, Ren, you're like a I don't know if you're a follower. I don't want to describe people as followers. It's like, oh, it's sent to me by one of my followers. <laughs> but whatever. Like, like Ren sent me this zine, and um, I printed it out on this pink paper just because I thought it'd be a little, like, flashier. <laughs> but it looks good on anything. And it's this little mini zine that's basically, like, they're going through and getting all of their all of their sort of frustrated feelings about zines out. And it's so, it's sort of tongue in cheek. It's very cheeky. Um, and I am especially happy to share this one because for one, Ren put this under copy left. Um, I'll get to that in a second, but basically it's like, I, I, I can share the entire thing, which is always fun. And they are looking for submissions for issue two. So, um, anyway, I guess I'll get to both of those things in a minute here, and we're just going to go through one at a time. But I get to show you the entire zine, which is awesome. So basically, it's like this, it's like a, it's a cheeky kind of, you know, expression of some of the, like, beautiful frustration that you can feel when when something takes over your life, and in this case, when zines take over your life, <laughs> because, um, like, it's always fun, I guess, to get to a new project or a new hobby or, like, a new obsession, a new interest, and I think that there's something really beautiful, I guess, about, like, the frustration that comes along with it, because it's not, it's not your typical frustration. It's not, like, frustration when... I don't know, like, your bus is late. It, it's not frustration in the sense of, like, things just aren't panning out your way. It's, like, frustration that you... that comes from love. It's it's frustration that's bubbling up because you love something so much. You love zines, and you you just, like... It just comes up in your life, <laughs> and I'll just, I'll just go through because obviously this talks about some of the frustrating instances. But yeah, so like, I'll just re I'll just sort of read the thing out loud. I wonder. Eh, I don't think I can read it backwards, so I'll try to. I'll do like the, uh, you know, librarian story time thing. <laughs> Disclaimer: I intend for the scene to be humorous. No zines were harmed in the making of this one, and I maintain a healthy relationship with my mom. 
brag. <laughs> I heart zines and the people who make them. That's this page. And this fucking quote, like, as basically, like, one of the first quotes in the zine, or, you know, the first pages in the mini zine, just floored me. It's such a good, it's such a good quote. A quote from my mom. Ever since my child became interested in zines, I find zines coming up at the most unexpected and unwelcome times. <laughs> and, like, it... it <laughs> and you know what that reminds me of is, like... Um, it's like, I, I, I had a whole page on this in, um, Unfair Maiden number one, like my, one of my first perzines, and, um, it just reminds me of, like, those satanic panic VHS tapes of, like, mothers warning each other about, like, the dangers of Satanism, and if your child wears black t-shirts and listens to... Metallica, then, <laughs> you know, now all my kid talks about is the devil's music. <laughs> and it just totally, it totally reads like that. Uh, you know, ever since my child became interested in zines, it's like they're fucking... <laughs> or, okay, it's either that, or it's like, it's like parents in the 90s who are complaining about the Pokemon fad, like, ever since my kids started that new Pokemon thing, they, they just won't talk about anything else. It's a disgrace. It's a, <laughs> I love this quote. And it's so, like, um, it's so encouraging to me because it feels like one of those little anti-authoritarian, like, yeah, screw you, mom, I love zines and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> and I, can you tell it's early? I'm, like, already losing my mind. Um, anyway, so I, <laughs> I like the disclaimer that, Ren, you maintain a healthy relationship with your mom, and of course I say all of this with absolute you know, love and, and, and adoration, I guess. <laughs> but isn't, that's just like the best tone set that you could possibly have for the, the anti-zine, like why you shouldn't be involved in zines. It's, it's like you're going to get involved in some, involved in a gang or something. It's like I'm getting involved in zines and now my mom is worried about it. <laughs> okay. Okay. The next page is here. Story time again. Nothing prepared me for the all-encompassing perfectionistic focus that zines would yank out of me. How could something so meaningful to me cause such massive amounts of interpersonal strife and general stress? And that is too real. And I guess this, like, the way that I read that is, like, the all-encompassing perfectionistic focus that zines would yank out of me. To me, that just reminds me of the first time that I made a zine. I kind of, I actually just showed it off. It was the, uh, Sacramento Punk zine, like the mini zine that I made for class so that I showed in my last, uh, mini zine March video. But it, it is so weird because it's like when you're making a zine, something about the nature of perfectionism in general just comes into really sharp relief and you can, you really look at it. And so you're sort of, at least for me, when I was first making zines, I was absolutely still in that perfectionistic mindset. And it's just like, for whatever reason, when I was working on zines, now I could kind of see what I was doing. Like, I could see that I was being perfectionistic. And I could see that I was being super hyper-focused on it. And it's one of those things where it's like, it's really confusing where it's not necessarily a, I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Like, I think perfectionism can hold you back in a lot of ways, but also I think that it really reminds me that perfectionism comes ultimately f from, like, perfectionism in certain cases can come from love and enthusiasm, and that for me making zines, it's like the reason that I feel perfectionistic about it at times is not because I want to sell it, not because I am expecting a grade on it in most cases, <laughs> and not because I like, um, 
I don't know, I'm afraid of failing exactly. It's not coming from fear. It's coming from genuine just enthusiasm and love and like, holy, like, I want to make this perfect because I love it so much. Um, yeah. So I guess uh, just that, that particular phrase, the all-encompassing perfectionistic focus it would yank out of me. Hang on one second here. Like, that's kind of what it, what it reminds us. Like, it, it draws it out of you, and it also pulls it further away. <laughs> I guess it's sort of like zines provide a certain sense of clarity or, or like, clarity or distance that allow you to see yourself. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. But, <laughs> but I totally relate to that, even just from these, like, two sentences I, it, it captures everything that I was trying, everything that I understand about perfectionism in relating to zines, and yeah, it's just so real. <laughs> okay, all right, the next section is sort of a two-part section. Six reasons you may come to hate zines <laughs> once you've been working on them. You may commence battle frequently with your computer and printer. <laughs> Printers are the fucking devil. Printers are man simultaneously mankind's best and worst invention. Like, <laughs> I spent, just yesterday, I spent probably like two hours trying to figure out how to do my double siding properly for my zines on my just home printer because it doesn't print double-sided normally like it does but it's one of those things where you have to take the paper out and put it back in backwards and all this stuff and it's like you really start to learn a few things about printing and you really start to learn a few things about pdfs that you never thought that you'd learn or want to learn and no human being should have to learn these things and i don't mean to say that it's hard like i mean it is hard but it's not difficult. I don't know if that makes any sense. Please don't use this as, like, trying to prevent you from making zines. Please use this as encouragement to make zines alongside people who understand the struggle. Or maybe that's just an entirely selfish thing. Maybe I'm just trying to get you to come on to the side of zines and, like, start making your own zines so that you can understand my pain. <laughs> you can understand what I go through to make these things. <laughs> okay, okay, next reason. Your living space may become a fire hazard due to the mountains of crafting paper, old newspapers, and other people's zines within. <laughs> I have tried to be organized. I really have, and honestly, I think I am doing a pretty darn good job of staying organized, but, like... If I let it slip just a little bit too far, just my entire house is piles of zines and, and like, recycling paper. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, the f fire hazard thing, like, seriously, watch out for candles and, like, like especially bright sunlight or something. <laughs> That's the genuine advice. <laughs> Please be careful for fire hazards. Six reasons continued on this side. You may need to devote a considerable amount of time in therapy to the topic of zines. Honestly, legitimately true. I have shared some of my zines with my therapist, <laughs> and my therapist has encouraged me to make zines on particular topics. I mean, I'll just tell you, like, the uh, Unfair Maiden 2, my big gender zine, where I'm really finally... Uh, digging out the, uh, like, uh, goth gender demi-boy riot girl, like, non-binary balance between man and woman, but also still, you know, what what I think is man and woman is different. Like, that, just my entire exploration on gender was sort of on recommendation of my therapist, and it has completely changed my life. Um, Yeah. You might awaken confused in the night with an idea for a zine you will never finish. <laughs> Seriously. You might you may even start to work on this zine despite the hour being three in the morning. <laughs> 
you may feel compelled to write an anti-zine to house your rage. Ultimately, yeah, like, zines beget zines. (laughs) They're like little magnets, and they pull zines out of you and around you, and suddenly your life is just zines. It's... God damn it. (laughs) This page... Use this page as a physical representation of your fury towards zines. It is healthy to acknowledge and process it. Yeah, I I really love that. And I'm especially happy because this mini zine is under anti-copyright. And so it's going to basically, like, it is encouraging you to share, share, create, and share. I don't know how else to put that, but basically, like, like, Make your own thing, make your own additions, make your own changes, and then share it again and allow other people to do the same thing. Again, I'll get to copy left in a second, but yeah, like, my my fury towards zines is like, I want to just hold them so tightly in my hands, like, just crush it towards my heart. Okay, actually, you know what? There's two things that this reminds me of. It's like, um... Okay, there's this story that uh, Maurice Sendak, the creator of um, the children's picture book uh, Where the Wild Things Are, lost my head for a sec, um, has this story about, like, a kid sent in a fan letter, like a little kid sent in a fan letter, and Maurice responded with a an original sketch drawing and, like, a card or something. And then the parent of the kid responds back to Maurice and said, my kid loved your response so much that he ate it. (laughs) And Maurice commented as like, he didn't, I love this so much. He didn't care that it was a Maurice Sendak original. He didn't care what uh, it might be worth or didn't care what would happen to it. He saw it. He loved it. He ate it. (laughs) And that's how I feel about zines sometimes where like, I do, I care a lot about trying to preserve zines because I'm very much in that, for one, librarian mindset and and sort of archivist mindset and also just like wanting, you know, I want to be able to read it over and over and again. But sometimes, (coughs) oh my god, (coughs) sometimes I really want to be able to just like see a zine and I love it so much that I'm just like... I just want to fucking eat it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so this, this, you know, it's not confined to the one page, but this is kind of my my physical representation of my beloved fury <laughs> towards scenes. <laughs> oh, man. Although now I will have to kind of, like, unfold this a little so that I can show you the back. I mean, I showed off the back a second. It's not too complicated, but basically... On the back, it says, send me a scan of your anti-zine page to be featured in the next issue. And it's signed, Ren, and the email address, I'll put it below, it's uh, Kylo Ren, but with an X instead of an E at gmail.com. Copy left, March 2023. So it was made for Mini Zine March, which is fabulous. Okay, so now the two things that I said I would get to real quick. One, copy left. So copy left is in essence, like, an anti-copyright, which I think is very appropriate for an anti-zine. And um, essentially the uh, purpose of copyleft is to try and um, shift the focus away from intellectual ownership and monetary gain toward making something uh, perpetually available for people to share and build upon and building an artistic community. Uh, so the, there are, like, official copyleft licenses that have long explanations. I will just link you to my page on my website about copyleft. But the idea is that if you create something and then put it under copyleft, then you're basically granting free permission for other people to edit and share and, um, do whatever they want with it. As long as the thing that they produce or the thing that, you know, if they if they share your thing, as long as it maintains those copyleft permissions. So the idea is that someone can't, you know, take your anti-zine and then scan it and then 
sell it and prevent anybody else from taking it. If that makes any sense. You can't, you can't like make an ant under copyleft. You don't, if you, if you make edits to the zine, then you have to allow other people to make edits to your work as well. Um, I am a very firm believer of copyleft. Uh, you, you might not know this, but all of my content is under that general copyleft permission. On YouTube, I think the only license that you can choose officially is Creative Commons, so that's what it's on, under. But, you know, the idea is that these are just anti-copyright or alternative copyright options for um, sharing your work, and I firmly believe in them and encourage people to submit their work to the public domain, to Creative Commons, or to copyleft permissions, like anything that... Um, you know, I, I encourage you to learn a little bit more about it and consider um, making your work available. But yeah, so like on my website, any of my zines, any of my writing posts, any of my coding, any of my art is all absolutely free for you to use and to reproduce. And um, like, if you want, you can even use it for things that go for sale. You just have to allow other people to do the same thing with your work. Anyway, <clears throat> so um, Ren let me know that they put the scene under copyleft specifically because they learned about it from my website, and I just think that's incredibly... I'm, I'm really genuinely incredibly honored about it, and so I'm going to, you know, um, I'm going to uh, link my copyleft page below so that you guys can learn about it too. But the more exciting thing <laughs> is that this is this anti zine is just the beginning. There are going to be more, and I am absolutely contributing to it. I'm working on my page right now, uh, and so the there's still sort of a lot of details that haven't been totally worked out yet. And I've been meaning to try and respond, and you know, I've been sending some emails back and forth, and it's like a you know, so maybe I should have waited to respond this video, but like I said, I have to preserve the look. Um, so I'll just try to summarize it as best I can. <laughs> is um, the uh, Ren's plan for issue two, at least, is that it's going to be half letter size. So let me just grab a. It's going to be half letter. So this, you know, letter sheet of paper fold in half or uh, uh, A4. And this size is the um, submission size for the next anti-zine. And um, you can submit one or multiple pages, I believe. And um, I think that Ren is looking for black and white, or at least like something that will look decently good printed on black and white, because... They're not sure about um, figuring out printing costs and hosting and that sort of thing. Um, anyway, like, there's going to be a little bit more detailed information on it. And, and of course, in the meantime, like, you should just definitely send an email to Ren uh, if you have any particular questions, if you want to submit. But I absolutely encourage you to, because I think that this is so fun and it's just, like, such a great community-building opportunity and such a great way to express both our love and, like, love-based hatred of zines. <laughs> love-based frustrations, just, like, anything anti-zine <laughs> that you have, um, any anything that's, like, you know, been resting secretly in your heart where you don't want to, you don't want to like share it with other people because you, you don't know if they're going to get it. Like you need to share this with other zinesters because only other zinesters are the ones who are going to get all of these frustrations. I think that's really the incredible, um, power of the anti-zine. So anyway, I feel like my description about what to do was really bad. So I'll try to summarize it here. Um, Submit a page or a few pages for the anti-zine. Um, text, image, collage, like whatever, as far as I know, anything goes. Um, try to keep it at least doable in black and white for the sake of printing. And um, more details to follow. 
and I guess in the meantime, send an email to Ren. I'll put the email below. And of course, I will also update the description here with any more official details or announcements or whatever about the zine. And if all goes well, I'm sure there will be multiple issues. So even if you have missed out on issue two, then I would encourage you to reach out to Ren anyway. Um, because I, I really, I think that there is something here. I think that it's going to go for a little while. Alrighty. Okay. I need to like, I need to get up. I need to put my coffee back in the microwave. And so I guess, I guess I will see you later. <laughs> thank you. Oh yeah. I forgot. I forgot to say thank you, Ren. Thank you very, very much for sending this to me. And I hope that I've done it justice and showed how fucking fabulous it is in this little video. Talk to you guys later. <laughs> Bye.